Kaiju are one of those archetypes that has attracted the attention of many individuals as a tech due to their ability to replace an opponent's monster with a much more manageable threat. Some have built more focused hybrid kaiju decks, mostly involving Yosenju or Gradles. The Yosenju hybridization seems to have simply come about due to the kaijus providing some level of field presence and comma one's ability to bounce the kaiju you give your opponent back to your own hand, netting you a plus. However, in my opinion, the hybridization is rather inefficient because without comma one, the kaijus produce the meaning most meaningful problem for Yosenjus in general, getting over big monsters. For Gradles, the idea is to eliminate pesky non-targeting issues that hamper Gradles in general, largely associated with high-level Cosmo monsters and March-protected monarchs. However, the biggest problem for Gradles is the life point damage associated with this overall strategy. Most intelligent duelists are going to realize rather quickly that the opponent is running a Gradle Kaiju deck, and will be able to play around it, especially the main meta decks. Thus, the strategy produces more pressure to suicide Gradles into the newly summoned Kaiju, and that life point damage from this strategy can add up rather quickly. Originally, pure Kaijus were just a pipe dream. But now, direct kaiju support has reached the point where a viable pure kaiju deck can be created, only requiring specific techs, but not requiring hybridization with an entirely separate archetype. However, there is an archetype that kaijus hybridize very well with, yet it does not seem like anyone runs that type of deck very often. In this deck build, I'll construct both a pure kaiju deck and a hybridized one with the aforementioned archetype. First, what does my pure kaiju deck look like? Let's find out. Focusing on direct support first, Kazukiru, the star-destroying kaiju, is one of the newer kaijus. I'm not a big fan of this one in this current environment. A year ago, even six months ago, this card would have been very solid. 3300 attack point, the ability to neutralize targeting effects, regardless of what was targeted, and targetless destruction from that negation. However, in the current meta, neutralizing single card targeting is not a big deal, even if the card is not the Star Destroyer, as almost everyone runs Twin Twisters to eliminate back row, and there are few cards that target in general in the meta decks. Take a look around the competitive scene, and ask yourself how many people still run Anti-Luminescent Knight and you have your answer to why I don't like running this particular kaiju. However, it is a side deck worthy card at one, maybe two copies. Thunder King, the lightning strike kaiju, is definitely high quality because a vast majority of back row and card effects somewhat in general in this current environment occur either on summons or during the battle phase. With Mirror Force variants being nasty counters to Kaijus, Thunder King's ability to shut down battle phase back row is definitely valuable. The two extra attacks against monsters is also nice for field clearance as Kaijus definitely do not like decks that swarm. However, the one major drawback of Thunder King for me is that it's level 9, not level 8, which eliminates some of its synergy with the overall deck. Therefore, I only run one copy. Dogaron, the Mad Flame Kaiju, is one of the originals, and not a bad card to run as a level 8, 3000 attack point monster with an inherent Regeki effect that only costs its attack. Interestingly enough, Dogaron is also a nice Kaiju to give your opponent off of a slumber when you have counters on the field, because it does not have a quick play effect, so your opponent cannot annoy you and steal your counters in the process of you actually getting rid of the Kaiju you gave your opponent. I run two copies. In my opinion, Gadarla is the mystery dust kaiju is the worst kaiju monster as three counters for one half attack reduction on all other monsters. This field is underwhelming to say the least. There really is no reason to run this card because most kaijus are the bully on the field anyways, and for those who are not, you can simply remove it for one of your kaijus. Also, kaijus do not swarm effectively, so it is difficult to take advantage of dropping the attack of two to four of your opponent's monsters, unless one's going to go complete ham on the number of kaijus in their deck and just needs more kind of filler kaiju, I would not run this card. Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, is the king of the Kaiju monsters for its Solemn Judgment-based effect. If Gamma Seal hits the field with at least four Kaiju counters on various cards and no attack point threat immediately on the opponent's field, 
it will be incredibly difficult sledding for the opponent unless they remove it with their own kaiju. The one big drawback to Gamma Seal is that it only has 2200 attack and you cannot special summon it in defense mode off of its own effect. Also beneficial is that Gamma Seal will almost always be the best card to start your kaiju plays by giving it to your opponent when there are no counters on the field. Overall, unless you choose to run a card like Moon Mirror Shield, Gamma Seal is best placed on your field either through Kaiju Files or Call of the Haunted. Three copies. War Machine is a close competitor for the title of Worst Kaiju Monster, but it comes up a, just a bit short. This card is just bad because the only thing it brings to the table in my opinion is raw attack power, which is the least valuable thing for a Kaiju deck. It's got plenty of raw attack power. Without the ability to copy the effect, or the ability to summon it to the opponent's side of the field, just skip it and lament the failure of card designers to make an actually useful card. Raiden, the multi-dimensional kaiju, is definitely a nice choice as a one or two of, because similar to Dogaron, it does not have a quick play effect. Thus giving it to the opponent with counters on the field is fine, and it has low enough attack points that you can attack over it with one of your own kaijus if you don't happen to have capture mission on the field. Its duplication effect is definitely nice, providing an additional 2800 attacker that can also be used as a free synchro or tribute fodder depending on how you want to run this deck, in addition just to being raw attack power because kaijus have a difficult time swarming. This is definitely a quality kaiju monster. I run two copies. Humongous, the sticky string kaiju, is a solid monster, but one that just doesn't fit into my deck design. The biggest problem I have with this card is accruing the counters for multiple negations, and the negations only lose the effect for a single turn. Basically, it's just like a breakthrough skill, which does not do much damage in the meta. If this effect said that the effect and the attacks are restricted until the next turn's end phase, rather than the next end phase, then this monster would be much better and good enough to warrant me running it. But it does not, so for me, it just doesn't fit my play style. The first effect of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is basically a Kaiju-specific Dark Hole, with the second effect allowing you to easily get a Gamma Seal in the Graveyard for a Call of the Haunted by running it over with a higher attack point monster that you summon onto your side of the field. The third effect is also a very nice and versatile plus one. Everybody likes plus ones. I like running three copies. The Kaiju Files is one of those balanced cards that has good and bad elements. The good is the versatility it provides and the ability to swap kaiju, especially provides a, providing a quicker means to get Gamma Seal on the field. The bad or worthlessness of the card is the counter ability and the spell trap searching ability. In general, due to the kaiju's one on the field restriction, it is difficult to really build counters on this card. You typically can only do two a turn, and that still takes a lot of cards from your hand. So it's just generally slow and inefficient. And the searching effect at this moment is rather pathetic, only allowing you to search either a slumber or a capture mission, as Waterfront is not really a kaiju card, because it doesn't have kaiju in its name. Due to this fact that this is not a Gamma Seal-centric build, basically a Gamma Seal or Bust build, I only run one cop. Waterfront is a key card for a pure kaiju, Kaiju deck, costless searching, creating a plus one, a five counter well for kaiju effects, and self protection. Three copy. Now, I don't choose to run terraforming, but I can see others favoring a two waterfront, one terraforming combination instead of just three waterfront. Overall, I like waterfront, but again, because this is not a Gamma Seal centric build, I don't view waterfront as a kind of get it or lose, we're really in trouble type of card. I don't like Capture Mission because its usefulness largely relies on the opponent playing almost stupid in a sense. Running Capture Mission in multiples can be a dead card in hand if one already exists on the field because the opponent will typically not destroy it due to the two card draw effect. Also the counter build is fueled by your own cards which limits its efficiency. Basically 99% of the time you can only add one counter to this card per turn. When this card is on the field with less than three counters, smart opponents are not going to flip kaiju face up because this card is just going to flip them face back down again and pick up a free counter. Basically this card is just too slow and doesn't produce enough of a benefit for my taste. Clearly due to the ownership of kaiju monsters remaining with the summoning player, running a pure kaiju deck demands running one of the two major options to regain control of owned monsters on your opponent's field, owner seal or remove brainwashing. I don't recommend running both because it produces 
heavy draw inefficiencies. The advantage of Owner Seal is it is a normal spell, which allows you to activate it without waiting and avoids those stray back row destruction elements. The advantage of Remove Brainwashing is that it's a continuous effect, whereas Owner Seal is a one shot. The problem I have with Remove Brainwashing is it can clog the hand due to its continuous aspect, and it's difficult to take a lot of advantage of brainwashing because again because of the kaijus only one on your field at a time effect. Thus I like running owner seal over remove brainwashing. I run three copies of owner seal. Returning to the monsters, the special summoning abilities of kaijus opens the door to easy rank 8 possibilities. Thus this deck combos nicely with three copies of Beast King Barbaros. For worst case scenario, Barbaros is a normal summon 1900 attacker, not bad, and the best case it can be used for a quick and easy rank 8 play, and then followed up with another kaiju summon to your field. Continuing with the monsters, one element missing from other kaiju decks that I've seen in the past is the summoning support element because the one on the field restriction for kaijus can leave them vulnerable for big OTK pushes by the opponent. Therefore, I like augmenting my defenses with two copies of Cosmo Wicked Witch and two copies of Spirit Reaper. Spirit Reaper is also a nice card because after a card like Slumber, you may have a kaiju versus kaiju field and you can normal summon Spirit Reaper and swing directly dropping a card from the opponent's hand after your kaiju monster has bested the one you gave your opponent. Finally, I run one copy of Neospatian Grandmole, which I ironically almost never see in other pure kaiju builds, and that boggles my mind, especially since one of the big reasons people started hybridizing Yosenjus and kaijus together was Kama 1's bounce effect. Grandmole has a built-in bounce effect, and can actually be kind of a pain in the neck just sitting on the field to the opponent. Also, I run one copy of Glow Up Bulb, which can be incredibly nasty in combination with Raiden, allowing you to get two level 8 Synchro Monsters on the field in a single turn. For those who have followed my other deck builds, they know that I'm not a fan of Trade-In, because I think it's an inefficient card in general. However, with the general searching ability of Kaijus, as well as the recursion options, the efficiency of Trade-In goes up a little in this deck. That said, I still only run one copy. Closing out the spells, I run one Regeki, one Upstart, and one One Day of Peace, because this deck is still a reaction deck over anything else. It doesn't really matter what your opponent puts on the field, you can always get rid of it, but you do have to watch out for those OTKs. I don't run Soul Charge for obvious reasons, the one Kaiju on the field restriction. For the trap cards, I run three copies of Drowning Mirror Force for protection purposes, three copies of Call of the Haunted for revival purposes, especially for opponent end phase summoning a Gamma Seal, finally one copy of Bottomless Trap Hole, one copy of Solemn Warning, and one copy of Skill Drain. This card is an overall boon for Kaiju because other than Gamma Seal, they really don't need their effects and their big bully high attack point monsters. An interesting tech card for this deck if one wants to be a little risky is Message in a Bottle which can commonly net multiple XZ summons or an XZ summon and a synchro summon. Overall, the extra deck is not hugely important. For me, I run one Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, one Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, one Crimson Blader, one Stardust Dragon, two Cyframe Omegas because you can get both of them on the field, Raiden's Token, Glow Up Bulb, Make One, bring Gloat Bulb back, use the Raiden, make the second one, one Ally of Justice Cataster, one number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon, one Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon, one number 38 Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy, one number 107 Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon, two Divine Dragon Knight Felgran, one number 23, Lancelot, Ghost Knight of the Underworld. And one number 15, Gimmick Puppet, Giant Grinder. Let's change gears and look at my hybridized kaiju deck. Oh my, is everyone tingling with anticipation? No? No one? Okay, well let's get started. Unlike in the pure kaiju deck, the hybridized deck runs three copies of Kizukuru, the star-destroying kaiju, only because it is a machine. Its 3300 attack is also useful for this particular deck, but its machine status is the only thing that really matters. 
I run one copy of Dogaran for its Regeki-like effect, as well as being a level 8. Not surprisingly, I run three copies of Gamma Seal, for, as stated above, three copies of this big turtle is almost mandatory for any kaiju deck, or even just teching kaijus. Finally, closing out the kaiju monsters, I run one copy of Kumongus. Early in the pure build, I stated my dissatisfaction with Kumongus, but in the pure build, there was a lack of associated attack power, so Kumongus' effect was substandard because of the one kaiju on the field rule. In this build, the hybrid agent can supply a sufficient level of attacking, allowing Kumongus to sit on the field as a monster version of lose one turn. Most should have already figured out what the hybrid association is when I stated Star Destroying being machine was so important. It's Cyber Dragon. The reason Cyber Dragons hybridize so well with Kaijus is their interaction with Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon and Gamma Seal. One of the biggest problems, as discussed above, in the pure build with Gamma Seal is its low attack point. However, with the help of Cyber Dragons, Gamma Seal becomes much more effective. Summon a Star Destroying to your opponent's side of the field, summon a Gamma Seal to your side of the field, then normal summon one of the many Cyber Dragon Mimic monsters, and finally remove the Mimic and the Star Destroying via Contact Fusion for Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. The end result is a 2200 attack point Gamma Seal that is not looking down the barrel of a bigger Kaiju, and if Waterfront is on the field, is ready to negate as well as an at least a 2000 attack Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. So, for the Cyber Dragon end of the monsters, I run two Cyber Dragons, three Cyber Dragons Dry, two Elemental Hero Prisma for its name copying effect, and two Cyber Dragon Cores. Some may balk at only having two Cyber Dragons and two Cyber Dragon Cores. The problem with running three Cyber Dragons is that it can get somewhat cloggy and produce dead draws in this particular hybridization. Core is the same way in the fact that the hybridization of this deck significantly reduces the overall effectiveness of core, both its searching ability and its name copying ability. Balance is the key, and despite star destroying, core in this more hybridized deck is only really valuable in the kaiju or desk bot matchup, and a third can always be sighted in if desired. The Prismas are actually nice additions because they make fusion plays seamless and also make repair plant live immediately. I think a key to remember with this deck is that the Gamma Seal Star Destroying Cyber Dragon combination, while it is powerful and the principal strategy, is it is not always going to be available, so you have to plan accordingly. Finally, closing out the monsters, not surprisingly, I run the one copy of Neospatian Grand Mole. Not running him doesn't make any sense at all. And in a change of pace, due to the greater needs of this deck to have monsters on the opponent's field, my OTK stopper of choice is three copies of Battle Fader over the Drowning Mirror Forces. The extra attack power provided by this deck lets it deal with the swarming a little easier than the pure build. For the kaiju side of the spells, I run three copies of Waterfront, three copies of Slumber, one copy of Kaiju Files, and one copy of Terraforming. For the Cyber Dragon side of the spells, I run two copies of Cyber Pear Plant, two copies of Instant Fusion, one copy of Power Bond, one copy of Overload Fusion, and one copy of Limiter Removal. A 6600 attack point Star Destroying is incredibly nasty. For the generic spells, I run one copy of Upstart Goblin and one Day of Peace, because again, this deck doesn't... It's explosive, but it can't float. Finally, for the traps, I run two copies of Call of the Haunted to bring back Gamma Seal or a Cyber Card to set up fusions in Infinity. For the extra deck, I run one copy of Cyber End Dragon. I think people have forgot this guy can do some serious work when given the opportunity. One copy of Cyber Twin Dragon, Two copies of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. I run a third in my side deck in case I meet, have the Cosmo or Despot matchup. One Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. Two copies of Panzer Dragon. One copy of number 38 Hope Harbinger Ti Drag Dragon Titanic Galaxy. One copy of number 23 Lancelot Ghost Knight of the Underworld. Two copies of Cyber Dragon Infinity. two copies of Cyber Dragon Nova, one Constellar Pallades, and one Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. In the end, I think Kaijus are an interesting deck because there is no deck they cannot defeat because of their replacement effect. However, they are rather slow because of the only one on the field restriction that can be susceptible to decks that swarm the field because of a lack of targeting protection. 
Castell, XZ Dragon, number 101 anyone. That's why I think Kaijus need to be played more defensively, because even more so than Madolce, there is no monster Kaijus cannot get over. So the biggest issue with Kaijus, in my opinion, is to ensure the opponent does not OTK you. Which of these two builds do I think is better? While I like playing both, I have to give a slight edge to the hybridization one between the Kaijus and the Cyber Dragons, because they are more explosive while still ret retaining some of the significant defensive capacity that's required to properly run Kaijus, in my opinion. Well, those are my two Kaiju decks. Thank you for your attention and your time. I'm out.